Welcome back. I'm excited to tell you guys what's happening this week in the news. First up, I want to talk about the things that are pressing. In the next eight weeks, there's a whole bunch of ServiceNow user groups and developer meetups. ServiceNow user group, groups are more focused on the sales sides of things. However, um, it's still a great place to network and find other like people. In addition, the ServiceNow meetups are also all happening at the same time. But they're ran by developers for developers. If you are new to the space, please check out your local developer meetup. It's a great place to become a part of something where you can offer to help to run host or bring content to. With that being said, we've got events happening in Madrid, Spain, Tampa, Florida, Phoenix, Arizona, Vancouver, British Columbia, Nashville, Tennessee, Denver, Colorado, and Kitchener, Ontario. I want to talk about this show. Here's the deal. I was running this too often before and I got burnt out. So last week or two weeks ago, I, I ran one. And um, that was thanks to Jordan Stein from Maven Next and John Manor encouraging me when I went to Knowledge23. The thing is, is I need help making these happen. If you have something you want me to bring up that you would think others in our space would enjoy hearing about or you'd like my take on, please send me it. If you'd like to contribute in some way, shape, or form, please message me. I could use help with thumbnails. Sometimes the content generation could use some help. And I'm up to varying the format. Bo is hiked, uh, a former founder of SkyDraft, which is the mobile platform that ServiceNow integrated to make their mobile platform, left ServiceNow about a year ago and just launched 8flow.ai like two days ago. It looks awesome. If you haven't checked it out, please do. It pretty much identifies patterns that people do between one site and another site, specifically helping with like ServiceNow and Salesforce, but I think it'll work with any different site. It looks really interesting and I can't wait to see more content about it. Carlos Camacho, I might have butchered that name, made a tool to help the folks who were giving golden tickets at Knowledge23 give those tickets away. ServiceNow is trying to get a million developers by the end of 2024 which I think is a lofty goal and very, what's the word? I think it'll be a difficult task and they won't be able to do it alone. And from what I've read and what I've seen, that's very true. So Carlos making this tool to let me say, hey, I have a spare ticket. I would like to gift it to someone. And then people who need it going to his side saying, hey, I would like a ticket. Can I please have one? That seems like a great use of technology and a great way to solve this problem. So if you have a spare ticket, check it out. And if you're looking for a golden ticket, which gives you free on-demand courses on ServiceNow, as long as you're not employed by a partner or otherwise have access to those courses already, I think, the legalese is kind of weird. Um, you should be good to go. Robert Fedorik and Corey Wesley interviewed Mark Rothoff on their podcast, CJ and the Duke, talking about all the hot, trendy topics. Generative AI, instant scans, content creation for freelancers, I haven't checked it out yet. I really need to, but it's checking all the boxes. I will be listening to it later this week. Mike Skidow scared the crap out of a bunch of people saying, hey, protection policies don't protect IP scripts, intellectual property scripts. It was found out that it works for scope stuff, but just not global stuff. There's a LinkedIn post with a bunch of comments on it. If you have any feedback about this, I would like to hear about it because if your IP isn't protected and your company is selling products on these stores, that's terrifying. So good job, Mike, for calling it out. But also, I wish you had made it more clear that it wasn't as big a problem as it seemed in the post. Tim Woodruff made a post about business rules and access controls and how they're broken. Well, they're not really broken. That's a little sensationalized. But there is the advanced check mark for both of those, which control the visibility of a script field. And a lot of people myself included, didn't realize that sometimes those scripts are executing even if advanced is not checked. So you could have some code that you never thought was running that in fact is running. So Tim made something to make a correction for that. Check out his post. Prashant's still covering these Utah features and some of his content I like and some of his content I don't. But this piece of content I think is fantastic. A new way to populate variables for catalog stuff. Catalog is... Home sweet home for me. I love ServiceNow Service Catalog. It was where I started working on ServiceNow and it's still my favorite place to work on aside from Service Portal. But one thing that's always difficult is auto-populating variables because that's complicated. 
You can do default value. You can do some client side scripts. You can use it UI policies, but this is another way to do it. And it's fantastic. If you have a few minutes, check out his video. It's pretty great. Andrew P of Elin uh, Software has been working on this product called Flare Edge, and it looks awesome. If you're not familiar with it, it lets modern web developers build on top of ServiceNow using modern web frameworks. So that whole goal that Bill has about bringing a million developers in, I think this is the way to do it, or at least one way to bring more folks in. Because you don't have to train folks up on ServiceNow to build on tooling that's already out there. There's a ton of React developers. There's a ton of Svelte developers. There's a ton of Next.js developers. And with this product, they can build within probably a half hour. If you're curious, please reach out to Andrew. Ebony was featured on Breakpoint with Chuck Tomasi, where she talked about her career and how she came up to the ranks less than two years ago. It's been a delight knowing Ebony. I've talked to her personally, and she's a fantastic person. If you're not familiar with, familiar with her story, check out this podcast. At all 23, there was a hackathon. I wasn't anywhere near it. I wish I had come by and spent some more time, but I was too busy speaking to everybody else. Ashton Sapphire, Sarah Tolson, Ebony, and Jesslyn Smith, and Chris Helming won it, though, building a Parks and Rec event management application. There's a, zoo, uh, a Loom a video that you can watch where Sarah Tolson talks through how it works and what it does. It's great. I, I love this stuff. I'd like to see the other hackathon entries, but um, I haven't found them yet. If you have them, why don't you put a link in the comment? Uh, the last detail I want to talk about is this next-gen program details. I know that the next-gen and skills bridge programs are pretty fantastic from ServiceNow, but one thing I didn't realize is as a if you are an employer, you can reach out to ServiceNow and say, hey, I would like some next-gen talent to join my group. Please send me some of them. If you're curious about that and you need more people to join your team and you're willing to take a bet on somebody new, which we all probably were at some point in our career, please do reach out and make that leap. That's all I have for the news this week. I won't be back for two weeks. 